CC, CEO, wanna change your life, come see me, yo, I'ma teach you how to build up wealth for your family, not just for yourself, I'm a bestseller, a house flipper, a businesswoman, a gold getter, a big investor, a gold builder, I can teach you to get richer, like millions, baby, you really about to fill your savings, you about to have multiple streams, to pass your children, baby, let me teach you to get your credit on track in the long run, you'll make it all back at Catalyst, and watch it all suck, not your black on firm, but we ain't all black on Hey y'all, it's your girl Constance Carter. Let me back up a little bit. I'm a little bit too close to this thing. How you guys doing tonight on this Wednesday night? This Wednesday, which is a winning Wednesday, a win, W-I-N-S-D-A-Y. How you guys doing tonight? Uh, I am so happy to be before you tonight. Um, it's another beautiful, beautiful night, 2021. Let's see, 2021 has so far has not disappointed me. Uh, what's going on in the news today? Um, so a lot of stuff going on in the news today. Uh, a lot of stuff with your president and everything going on. And it's, you know, I, I kind of been paying attention and kind of not been paying attention, uh, but I understand um, it's a lot of stuff. So just, you know, I want to say this to everybody out there, be careful, be very careful because I'm hearing that um, at the inauguration next week, they're talking about um, uh, storming the capitals in all 50 states. They're talking about, I heard rumors that they were, they're trying to do initiations where they're going to be, um, you know, targeting young black men uh, to commit crimes against and to possibly murder, hang, things like that. So you guys just be careful out there. Um, you just don't know these crazies. Make sure you strap up, make sure you protect your families. All right. So it's your girl Constance Carter and I am on Fly Nubian Queen, the network for melanated people just like you like me, I'm here to give you all the information and the nuggets you need to improve your life in every way. So I want you to log on and listen to me every night because every night I have something that I think is of great value to you that's going to enhance your life one way or another, whether it's financial, whether it's spiritual, whether it's motivational, whether it's your love, your family, whatever. Everything that I do is all about how to help you to live your best life. So I want you to subscribe to Fly Nubian Queen. Go over to the YouTube page and make sure you subscribe and hit that notification button. Then go over to Con Nobody Works Harder Than Constance Carter YouTube page and hit that subscribe and notification button. And then I want you to uh, come on over to Facebook. Make sure you're following Fly Nubian Queen on, F Queen on Facebook and Nobody Works Harder Than Constance Carter on Facebook as well. And then go over to uh, 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 IG. And uh, follow me on uh, I, I Instagram at I am Constance Carter. So I want to know where everybody is hailing from tonight. Where are you guys from? I see Ramel's from Chicago, but where is everybody else? From? Oh, lady, she's from uh, Maryland. Where are you guys at? I want to uh, I want to see who I'm talking to because I know I'll be talking to people from all over the world. I know I'm uh, often talking to people from Africa and Australia and in Europe. Uh, so tell me where you're from today. I, I'm hailing in uh, California. Um, I've been actually stopped in California and uh, I am from San Jose, California, which is the Silicon Valley, which is where we all make things happen. But where are you guys coming from? Where are you guys hailing from? Melody says she's hailing from Illinois. Patricia B1. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. Um, sweet Tanya, you from VA? Shout out to you in VA. Uh, Lori, you in Michigan? Shout out to Lori, Yvette, you in Philadelphia. Yes, I'm loving it. So as we come on here, you guys, tell me where you're from and make sure that you're, you're hitting the like button. Make sure you're hitting the heart button and make sure you're sharing this information because I'm about to get put some game on you, okay? So as you've seen in the title, I filed bankruptcy. So let me share a little bit about your story if you don't know me because sometimes some, so for some of you, it's your first time logging on. It's your first time seeing me. You're like, who is this black girl uh, that's talking about bankruptcy? Well, it's your girl. And uh, I did file bankruptcy just almost 11 short years ago. Um, I filed bankruptcy. And it was probably one of the best and the worst things that I've ever done. And I wrote it in my book, The Secret to Breaking the Bro Code. I wish I had a book around here, but I wrote it in my book and I talk about how it was the... Worst day of my life. But actually, y'all, let me keep it real. It was the best day of my life. It was the best day of my life when I filed bankruptcy. Bankruptcy is not the end of the world, y'all. It is. I promise you, bankruptcy is not the end of the world if you know how to reestablish yourself. For me, I overextended myself. I did too much. When I was 26, I started in real estate. And the first year I made $70,000, which matched what I was making when I was in IT the year before. I have an IT background. Like I said, I'm from the Silicon Valley. So a lot of us were in IT. And uh, first year I matched my salary. And every year after that, I never made anything under six figures. So when I filed bankruptcy, I was making 
almost 200, well, actually almost $250,000 a year. So almost a quarter of a million dollars a year. And yet I still filed bankruptcy. I filed bankruptcy in the middle of uh, another crisis that was going on, which was the foreclosure crisis. This was in 2009. So almost 12 years ago. So it'll be 12 years th this year in May. It'll be 12 years. And uh, I just mismanaged my money. I have more month than money. And you might say to yourself, OK, you was making two hundred fifty thousand dollars. You could manage that. Well, broke mentality is a broke mentality. I don't care how much money you make. I don't care if you make two hundred thousand. I don't care if you make twenty thousand dollars. There are people that are making twenty thousand dollars a year that saved that had more money in the bank at the end of the month. than I had making two hundred thousand dollars a year. You know what I mean? I had more month than money. I couldn't, my, 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 I had houses that got foreclosed on. I had uh, cars that got repossessed. I couldn't, we would take our kids to the fair and we couldn't even afford to get all four of our kids a day pass. And I'm making over $200,000 a year and we just didn't have the money. And so I, I mismanaged my money. I had a broke and broken mentality. So, you know, it's just like those athletes. They say that the football players who, you know, they go they go bankrupt uh, within five years of retiring from the NFL. Yeah. Well, if you don't have financial literacy and that's the reason why it's so important to me, you guys, if you don't have financial education, if you are not financially educated and financially wealthy in your mind, then I don't care how much money you make. You can go from from having a lot to zero again. So don't get it twisted. It don't matter how much money you make. Just because you make a lot of money, it don't mean that you're going to keep a lot of money. So I'm no better than anybody, somebody who makes, you know, doesn't make, you know, 15, 20,000 dollars a year. If I can't save it, it don't matter. I just spent my money on a bunch of shit. And uh, I ended up going to bankruptcy court. And it was like, you know, when I went in there, it was a really scary thing. You know, I, you think about this. And this might be you right now. Bill collectors won't stop calling you. Um, you're getting notices in the mail. You got to hide your vehicle um, and you are overwhelmed in debt. And it will take you. This was this is always my rule of thumb. If it'll take you more than two years to pay off that debt. Then you may as well go in and file bankruptcy. Let me repeat myself. If it's going to take you more than two years to pay off that debt. Then you might as well go in and file bankruptcy. You know why I say that? Because you can file bankruptcy and you can be back in a position to purchase a home or anything else in two years. Let me say that one more time. If you file bankruptcy, you can be in a position to purchase a home or other things within two years. You could purchase a car right away. You know, after bankruptcy, I got all kind of offers on cars. I got all kind of cars, credit cards, everything else. So you can get back in the game right away. What they won't do is if you're over, you're mounted over in debt and debt and debt and you late behind, late with everything, you got all these collections and all this stuff going on. You ain't nobody going to give you credit. Nobody's going to give you credit. But you can actually um, have reestablished yourself and be ready and be in position within two years. What's up, Miss Queen T Tamisha? How you doing, boo? Uh, and hey, Carlos from St. Louis. Um, I'm glad you needed to hear this, Erica. So I want to I want to just tell you that right now. And so, again, don't look at my situation like, dang, she made a lot of money. And I've been blessed to make a lot of money because guess what? I'm a hustler. When I told you to go over to my page, nobody works harder than Constance Carter. It's because I am one of the hardest working women in show business. I got 11 revenue streams as of today. Right. Because I work. I work. I work. I, I don't go to sleep. I go to sleep. I wake up in the middle of the night and I work when everybody in the house is sleeping. I work. So I do that because I'm trying to build a legacy for my family. But just not too long ago, I, all my work and I never stopped working hard. I just wasn't working smart. And so I had to file bankruptcy. And so when I went to bed, the day of my bankruptcy date, the day I was due to be in there, you know, the sky was gloomy and the clouds were gray. Whew. And I had the weight of the world on my shoulders when I went up in there, you guys. It was like. Oh, my God, what am I doing? All these people calling me. Everything is on me. You know, I it's just just everything was mounting and mounting and mounting. And I walked up in that courtroom and I saw people see it's the height of the foreclosure market. I live in Stockton, California. Stockton had just filed bankruptcy, I think that year, the year before. So everybody was filing bankruptcy. Right. Bankruptcy was just all over the place because, you know, foreclosures and all this stuff was mounting. So every bankruptcy court was packed. 
So people were in there. People, I mean, it took literally like 10 seconds for people to go in and get their stuff, like, you know, get the judge to approve their, their bankruptcy. So they go in here, they look at the, okay, good. You out. Go to the next one. It was like an assembly line. You out. But when they got to mine, because I was self-employed and I had to show my bank statements and my bank statements had a lot of money going in and out of that bank. And I had to sit there for 15 minutes, which felt like 15 hours. It felt like really three hours sitting up on that stand, having to justify my expenses because they were like, well, you got a lot of money coming in. What's going on? And I had to sit there and explain everything. And I did it. Cause I know how to, you know, I was really poised and I was able to explain and, you know, this goes to this and this is a lot of for this. And, you know, I was able to explain that. And so when they said, it was like that weight just instantly just released from my shoulders. And I remember my attorney was in the bankruptcy court with me and she came up to me and she was like, I was so scared for you. You did so good. Because I was really, you know, I, I was I was really poised under under pressure because really, listen, I was doing bad. I was doing real bad. Like, I, 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 yes, this money was coming in, but it was this money was accounted for. So I was able to reasonably justify um, why I needed to file bankruptcy. And I did. And when I walked out of that bankruptcy court, the sky was the, 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 it was blue. The sun was shining. The birds were singing and it was whew, it was a beautiful day. But I had to go through um, that. And uh, it's the reason why I wrote my book. Now, when I walked out of bankruptcy court, I ended up with a 379 credit score. Mm -hmm. I ended up um, having to reestablish myself. I started taking classes. I was like, okay, I need to do things differently. I got to change my mindset. I got to, you know, figure out how I could keep money rather than, rather than it's always going out, rather than it's always going out. I got to figure out how I could save money. I got to figure out how to, you know, get my mindset right live frugal, live beneath my means, um, you know, do things differently. So I took classes and I took training and I made sure that I was financially astute because a lot of us, how many of you were taught um, finances in your home? Let me ask you that. How many of you were taught finances in your home? How many of you were taught credit in your home? And I'm going to get to which bankruptcy in a minute. So I'm going to talk about that, Carlos. But how many of you were taught finances in your home? And how many of you were taught uh, about credit in your home? You see, I wasn't taught about finances in my home. I was taught about credit. And the thing that I was taught about credit was my parents overhearing them talk and saying, we can't get this because we got bad credit. We can't get that. We can't do this or that because we have bad credit. So I didn't know what bad credit was. I just knew it was ruining our lives. And I knew that I didn't want to ever have this bad credit ever again in my life. So I vowed that I wouldn't have bad credit. Well, as I walked out of bankruptcy court, I had a 379 credit score. So hence, this is where I was in my 30s, you know, bankrupt, broke, busted, but free. And um, I ended up filing chapter seven, Carlos. I filed chapter seven bankruptcy. And the reason why I filed chapter seven, and I'm glad you needed to hear this, Valerie. The reason why I filed chapter seven bankruptcy is because, um, did you know that most people who end up filing a chapter 13 ends up filing a chapter seven anyway? So let's talk about the difference between a chapter seven, seven and 13. So when I walked out of that bankruptcy court, I was free. Could not a, a creditor call me ever again. It was illegal and against the law for anybody to call me about a god darn debt after it was discharged in the bankruptcy. So they could not. I was done. So I was avoiding them phone calls before. I was avoiding going to the mailbox before. Well, they couldn't. You know, when I would call my mortgage company, they couldn't. They would say, hey, I just want to let you know this is, you know, this is this is not an attempt to collect the debt because they can't attempt to collect the debt. Once you file bankruptcy, it is against the law. And they're very clear on that. Um, you know, if you have a car, they can't try to come and and give you late payments for that car afterwards. And I, I've had that happen to my clients. Um, they, they kept the car. They ended up keeping the car. They ended up continuing to pay for it in this chapter seven. And then the uh, car company had put late on their uh, credit credit report and they had to remove it. So I filed a chapter seven because at chapter seven, it just removed the debt and I didn't have to think about it again. I, I had houses. I had a house at that time. I had one house left. 
I had to short sale some and then I had to foreclose on some, but I had one house left and I was able to still keep that house um, because it was upside down. Right. So when you have a chapter seven, bank, when you file chapter seven, you can't have a whole bunch of equity. You can't have a whole bunch of assets and you can't make a whole bunch of money. And I think there's a limit. And I'm not sure today what the limit is on what you can make when you're filing chapter seven. There was that limit when I filed the file of chapter seven, but because I was self-employed, I was able to expense off a lot of the income that I made to fall under that guideline, which I think was $70,000 or something like that for a single person. So I was able to do that. And then I, I um, so with the chapter 13, what you have to do with the 13 is you have to repay the debt, repay the debt. So they reestablish. And the benefit of a 13 is say you want, you have a house, you got a little equity and you want to keep that house. Then, you know, you have to reestablish the, the, the debt and repay it. The problem is you got to do, you got to reestablish it with all your debts. So say you have credit cards and, and all these other bills, you have to make arrangements to pay that. And you have to pay it for like five to seven years. The problem is most people do not finish the bankruptcy. My thing is, Go ahead and just discharge it all and start over five to seven years. You are going to waste, spend five to seven years of your life paying off something when you could just get it discharged, get it out the way and keep it moving. I know some people who are some great Christians. I love I love God and they want to be good stewards and they've had to file bankruptcy. And they said, you know, I still need to pay what I owe. I just need to reestablish myself. And I think that's very commendable. But if you can file a chapter seven, go on and file that chapter seven and get that mug out the way. The chapter seven, um, another another benefit of a chapter seven is um, it allows um, you to you know be free. It'll, again, they can't call you um, this discharge within a few months. So I think I filed in um, May and it was discharged by August. So it's done. August, we done. Boom. And then I was able to renegotiate on the mortgage and, and things like that. The, the, the cons is it, if you have a lien, it won't remove the lien from, say, your property. So you can still have a, a, a lien could still be on your property. OK, um, if you have more than four hundred thousand dollars in unsecured debt, you cannot file a chapter 13. Your disposable income has to pass the means test for chapter seven. But listen. A chapter, a, a bankruptcy period is not the end of the world. For me, it was the start of, of everything. A chapter, a, a bankruptcy was a start of a new life for me. It gave me a second chance. I've met so many people that say, hey, you know, I, I, filed, I filed bankruptcy back in the 90s. And so I, I can't do nothing. They think a bankruptcy is a death sentence. No, it could be a life sentence. All that debt that's mounting and mounting and mounting, that is a death sentence. You can't do nothing. You're stressed out. You're busted. You're disgusted. And you are living life to pay everybody. Don't live your life trying to pay everybody off. These, these courts, these systems are set up for that. How many millionaires, yo, yo impeached, your two times impeached president, then filed bankruptcy how many times? So you have to look at it more as a business decision. And that's how I had to look at it. I always got to look at things um, with the cup half full instead of the cup being half empty. Look at it as a, uh, a business decision. Look at it as something that you're doing to reestablish. And the thing about it is just do not get back in, 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 in financial trouble again. Don't try not to get back in financial ruins again. You have to change your habits. You need to live below your means. You need to start doing things differently. Now that 379 credit score, I was up over a 600, over 600 credit score within a year. So you need, there are things that you should do after filing your bankruptcy to reestablish your credit. And you can, because now your, your slate is white clean. Now you got this big hunk of ding on your credit, this bankruptcy, ah, that's, that's bad. But you can have good things to counteract the bad. The good things, get a credit card. And if they won't give you a credit card, get a secure credit card. Go to First Premier, get a secure credit card. Um, start, you know, get, 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 you know, get a mixed use of credit. I want you to get a mixed use and just start trying to establish your credit immediately. 
because that link, and I talked about it uh, on on. If you guys go back, if you look through, go to uh, YouTube and look uh, look at my my show about credit. When I talk about how to increase your credit score and what qualifies and what what uh, helps your credit is a mixed use of credit. Look at that; it's a very valuable video. But you start establishing that early on, and so that you could have that length. And so by the time that year hits, I don't care where you are, you're going to be back up significantly. And we'll talk about this more um, on Constance Carter VIP. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Constance Carter VIP. So I teamed up with your boy and boy Watkins, and we decided that we wanted to do something for the community. Um, I do. I offer coaching. Um, and for you, for those of you who don't know who I am or what I do, I, I own Catalyst Real Estate Professionals. We are the largest African-American owned real estate firm in California. I also own a co-working space. I have a lending company. I have um, a couple of best-selling books. One happens to be about credit. One happens to be about the secret to breaking the broke code. I have, uh, I'm, an, I'm an investor in real estate. I'm an investor in cannabis. And so I have about 11 revenue streams. But this had to happen after the bankruptcy. And so the reason why I, I, I told you all that is because I offer coaching. I do business coaching and I'm getting ready to start up a business boot camp. But what Boyce and I decided to do is what we said we wanted to do something for the community. And so I do a Q&A every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific. And it's where I talk to talk to people and I answer your questions. Now, my coaching, I charge two thousand dollars per person to coach them. But this is only fifty nine dollars. And guess what? I went over there yesterday to see how much it cost. because I didn't know how much it cost. I didn't know how much they were charging. And it's free right now, the first month. So you get 100 percent off. Go ahead and subscribe to Constance Carter VIP and we can dig deeper in that. And we can talk about your unique situation and see if this is what this is for you. But my whole goal and everything I do is I want to build the community. And sometimes reestablishing things and getting back on track and sometimes we, we get set back. You know, uh, Willie Jolly said, but a setback is a setup for a comeback. So don't get discouraged if you find yourself in financial ruin. You can bounce back. I bounce back. Don't be discouraged if your credit is jacked up. You can bounce back. There's things that you can do. I'm here to help you in a holistic way, you know, in love, in relationships, in uh, your finances, in your spirit. You need all of those things in order to be a whole and complete person. And so that's what I want to bring. That's what I bring to the channel. So go to Constance Carter VIP and you get access to me one on one where we could just talk and you ask me questions and I answer. and We could just engage and vibe and, and all that stuff because I want to help you because I know that, you know, there's a wealth gap. And as we see, it's growing and growing and growing. And, and one of the things Dr. Boyce said the other day that I wholeheartedly agree with is the, the student loan crisis is. Um, contributing to um, the wealth gap. I did a, a TED talk a few months ago. It's called Google that shit. Uh, investments we can make to close the wealth gap. And I really talk about really real solutions on what we can do to close the wealth gap. Um, so Google it. GTS, Google that shit. Go look, go look at my, uh, my, my TED talk um, because I talk about that. I'm passionate about that thing. But the student loan debt, like y'all, listen, we are we are we are the most educated segment. Black women are the most educated segment. And we are we are number one at getting student loans. And I believe that college is a racket. Now, I don't I don't have a college degree. I got a Ph.D., a public high school diploma. I am sending my children to college. I'm, my daughter is a, a senior at Hampton University. And uh, I have paid, you know, over well over one hundred and thirty thousand uh, dollars for her to go to go to Hampton University. And, um, and, and and I knew going in that college wasn't going to teach you nothing. My baby been in there four years and she's a marketing major and Hampton University ain't taught her ish about marketing. Not one thing. Do you know she started her marketing business this year and had to learn everything from both me, my marketing team and Google. So so college is a racket. College is um, college is not really necessary unless you're going for a specialized um, uh, industry, like if you're going to be a doctor or a, or a lawyer or maybe an engineer. But if you're going to go do something else like marketing, you don't need a college degree. You just work hard and make way more money. College only teaches you how to be an excellent employee. But yet we get these student loans and I'm on my soapbox about student loans. And then we get in this huge amount of debt. And like that, like Dr. Boyce said, you know, we are, the, our, our incomes haven't risen, but student. But the price of tuition has exponentially. 
And so it's better if you if you if you got a trade, it's better if you go online, it's better Google University. You can learn anything that you want on Google GTS, Google that shit. You can learn anything that you want. I had a high school principal um, last year that I was trying to get approved for a loan. I have my own lending company and I couldn't approve this lady for over one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. And she made. 250 and her husband made almost a hundred thousand dollars and she could not get over a, a loan for over hundred and fifty thousand dollars because she had five hundred over a half a million dollars in student loan debt this is why the wealth gap is widening because we are the ones that are getting all of these student loans and so if biden is talking about getting rid of student loans ten thousand dollars ain't shit especially if on average we're looking at about a hundred thousand dollars in debt ten thousand dollars ain't gonna do nothing so I want I want us to be smart. And this is the reason why I say this. I'm not telling nobody not to go to school or send their kids to school. If that's if you need higher education, that's great. But what I am saying is just be smart and do things that can help you to build wealth. There's other ways. There's other revenue streams or other things that you could do. I wrote a book uh, during the pandemic because the pandemic has also created a lot of opportunities. Y'all the pandemic. I had to shift and pivot. You know, I own a real estate company and I had just bought a commercial building. And the commercial building is a beautiful display of black excellence personified in real life, real time, all that. It's, it's a great space. It's called the co-op spot. Go to the co-op spot.com and check it out. I bought this building, closed on it December 31st. It was like, we opening, open, open up for business on March 1st. Two weeks later, it was closed down due to COVID. So as you can imagine, that is not making me any money this year. I mean, I make a little bit, but I am not profiting from that business at all. And I had to shift and I had to pivot. And so um, I had to do things a little bit differently. And it birthed other business ideas for me. It birthed other things. And so I didn't let that get me down. I said, okay, what else can I do to, to, to kind of monetize? And that's what we have to be thinking. Don't ever get caught holding the bag, working for an employer only, even if you do work for an employer, and I'm not putting down anybody who has a J-O-B because that's commendable. You go to work every day, but make sure you have some other things because that job could, could, could let you go at any time. And then what are you going to do? So if it's investing, invest in real estate. That's the number one way to close the wealth gap. Invest in, uh, invest in stock. My son has a stock group. My son is 16, you guys. He has a stock group. He has over 100 people in the stock group and he's teaching folks game on stock. My son is making so much money. He made $7,000 this month alone in stock. And I think it was somewhere almost $3,000 just yesterday he made in stock. So there's things that you can do in order to have re multiple revenue streams. And I want you to start thinking outside the box. It doesn't take a whole lot of money. Take $50 aside, $100 aside, do something to start investing in something else. The value of the internet is so great because you can do anything and then you could be anybody. You don't have to be, I don't have to be Constance Carter, this black chick from San Jose, California. I could be anybody, they don't know. Anybody could buy from me because they don't know. So you don't have to worry about things like, you know, discrimination or things like that online because you could be pretty much whoever you wanna be. As long as you provide a good product and a service, you could make a lot of money. So I want to encourage you. I wanna encourage everybody on here tonight to do something different and make sure that you grow your money and you don't blow your money. Don't be in a situation like I was. My situation, ugh, more month than money, making a, half, making a quarter of a million dollars a year, but still wasn't able to maintain. And you don't wanna be like me. I only have one revenue stream. You wanna make sure that you have multiple. So I just wanna encourage you today, if you feel like you are overwhelmed in debt, don't get discouraged. Bankruptcy is not as bad as you think. And I don't want to encourage people to go out and file bankruptcy, but I'm just saying it's not the end of the world. You can reestablish yourself after bankruptcy. It's just all about how you do it, how you shift and pivot. And listen, I am not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of what I went through. I know people who went through bankruptcy the same year as me and would not ever tell anybody that they went through bankruptcy. I got friends. They're like, ah, I don't know how you be out there sharing that, Constance. It's because I want to help other people. Because I realized that my hardships can be a blueprint to help other people. And so that's how I live my life. And that's why I'm so open. I'm an open book. So you could ask me anything. Make sure you go to Constance Carter VIP and you could ask me anything. And, you, and don't feel ashamed because here's the thing. I've been everywhere. 
People be like, you know, oh, I don't want you to pull my credit because I have the ability to pull credit. Listen, you probably ain't been lower than me. <laughs> I was a 379. <laughs> the lowest you can go is 350. We, you probably have not been as low as me and I'm okay with that. So like, don't ever think, don't ever be ashamed. Just know that if I can make something and do something that you absolutely can too, because I am not the smartest tool on the shelf. I'm not the smartest person out there. I promise you I'm not. I surround myself around really smart people and I go to places where there are a lot of smart people and I just execute. I glean from them. I learn from them and then I execute. And, and, I, and, and everything that I've, I've uh, invested in myself, because I do that a lot, you know, I've invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in myself because I don't have an education. So I always somewhere, if y'all don't quit closing that damn door, but I, because I don't have an education, I make sure that I invest in myself. And so my give back to you is Constance Carter VIP, where I want you to invest. I think it's $59 a month after the first month. Like it's nothing, but invest in yourself. Get yourself a coach. I do coaching. So if you want to do some one on one coaching with me, you are more than welcome to hit me up on that, too. But go, the first step I would do is go to Constance Carter VIP. Let's, let's let's answer some of your questions and let's get you out of that rut that you're in. And let's put you on a path to being the greatest person that you can be. OK, so let me go and look at see, see if there was any questions from some of these comments before I get out of here. And I want to shout you guys out. Philly um, Yvette is in Philly. Tony is in Mesa. Um, Shelly's in Pittsburgh. Um, Jean Michel is in Moria's Indian Circle, Indian Ocean. Okay, see, I'm telling you, we got folks across the pond. Yes. Um, bro, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Muhammad is in North Carolina. Yes, Fly Nubian Queen rocks, baby. Um, Sparkle said is from Georgia. Uh, let's see, William is from Lakeview, California. Um, I'm glad you needed to hear this, Erica. Let's see, who else? Um, in addition, a fool and his money are soon part of my mother said it wasn't much money you made, but what you do with it. So that always suck with girl. Come on. Can I get a witness? Um, Shine said, if you file bankruptcy, how long should it take for you to buy a house? Two years. That's why I said, if it, if it takes longer than two years for you to pay off that debt, you might as well go in and, and file bankruptcy and, and get in the house in two years. Can do seven and keep your stuff. Yep. Well, not everything. So like your credit cards and stuff. I have some really good credit cards I had to let go. Uh, Carlos, you about to Google that shit. Yes. Jason said, if you're divorced, make sure your ex has truly included all creditors you both had. My ex didn't report a card we had gotten together when we first got married 13 years earlier that I used once. But he's still buying jewelry for his girlfriends. And the creditor came after me after we were divorced for months. I filed chapter seven. That includes that included this insanity. Oh, I'm so sorry for you, Jesse. You know, divorces are always ugly. They're never fun. The vision, the activities and creations must always exist before creations and activities themselves. Amen to that. I'm going to use PhD. Yep, that stands for your public high school diploma, baby. So thank you guys. Thank you for listening to me to share my journey. Um, and it's only, you do the same thing. And always remember that your hardships can be the blueprint to help other people. So never underestimate the power of an obstacle and never underestimate having to push through that obstacle because there are people like you that are looking at me. They're saying, thank you for sharing your journey. There are going to be people looking at you when you make it past to say, thank you. I needed that. I can't reach everybody, but there are people that you can reach. And if you keep pushing, you're going to be able to help somebody else. So understand that everything that you go through is not just for you, but it's also to help somebody else. So what's up, Tony from D.C.? Thank you guys again for tuning in, my friends. Um, and make sure, again, you subscribe to Fly Nubian Queen. Go to YouTube and please share this, Tony from D.C. Share this, everybody, because this is something that everybody needs to hear. So I want you to take a moment right now before you get off of this broadcast and make sure you share this. All your friends, put it in the financial groups, put it everywhere on Facebook. Make sure you share this link, this YouTube link on all of your platforms because folks need to hear this. People need breakthroughs. People need understanding. People need to know that, you know, financial ruin, bankruptcy is not the end of the world, but there are things that you can do to establish yourselves and go to even higher heights. So I'm so glad you were encouraged by this, Dee. I'm so glad that you were encouraged by this, Valerie. Kareen, thank you too. And uh, you guys, thank you for tuning in. I will be here tomorrow. I'm gonna be talking about black love tomorrow, y'all. Same time, same bat channel. 
I appreciate you. Peace and love. Yeah, it's CC, CEO. Wanna change your life? Come see me, yo. I'ma teach you how to build up wealth for your family. Not just for yourself, I'm a bestseller, a house flipper, a businesswoman, a go getter, a big investor, a gold builder. I can teach you to get richer like millions, baby. You really about to fill your savings. You about to have multiple streams to pass your children, baby. Let me teach you to get your credit on track in the long run. You'll make it all back at Catalyst.